Good morning, New Eden. Today is October 4th, 2024, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. I'm your host, Frozen Fallout, and today we have a really special guest here, Frippy, running hey for CSM. Hey, how's it going? Doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Very excited. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting. So, um, kind of delve right into it. Um, I, I'm I'm interested to get into your story because it is a new player experience that is extremely fresh. That we get to hear, you know, what your experience is, uh, and I don't get an opportunity to hear from people that have just jumped into the game this year. And got to see what the new player experience is like it, you know you've probably heard about faction warfare maybe not played in it yeah. you know been out in 0, 0.0 definitely from uh you know understanding of your being in karma fleet um so let's kind of just dive into the very beginning though what got you into eve online what what when did you start hearing about this game so basically um I, between before, sort of i uh before I moved down to university, I uh, worked in a pub, and two of the regulars at my pub played Eve. And funny enough, one of them played it for like nine years, and the other one had been playing it for three years. And they'd always sit right next to the bar, so that I'd all they'd ever talk about was Eve whenever they <laughs> came to the pub. And so I eventually got interested in sort of. I'm a gamer. I, my background is competitive first-person shooters, but they were talking about like a space game that had a lot of freedom and exploration xyz so i would speak to them and talk to them and then eventually they just kind of brainwashed me into sort of getting the game and then um i they wrote me literally an a4 piece of paper of basically saying okay this is what your first two hours of the game is going to be like just do this and you'll have a fun time and so i started playing uh, march 30th 2024 um I had instantly joined up to Karma Fleet University, which oh. is sort of like, which is, like, for those that don't know, is like the sort of grassroots sort of teaching new players about the game before sort of getting you applied into actual Karma Fleet. And because both of them were, well, one of them was ex Karma Fleet and joined Karma Fleet University when his when the other guys started playing the game, so they'd both been in KFU for three years at that point. And so got me into it pretty easily. And then with KFU, I was that was up in high sec, up in Seren. So obviously it was quite close to Jita. So I got to experience the shenanigans of the ganking on the routes to Jita. You know, I got to experience what high sec was like, but next door was low sec. So if I wanted to go do some ganking myself, I could go to low sec and see what that was like. And, you know, it was quite a sort of thrown into a deep end approach to the game i mean they told me a bit about it but learning the game in itself and the way it worked and everything was more on my part because it didn't really want to ruin the experience for me and honestly within i'd say three four days of having the game i was kind of hooked oh yeah and nice. I, I, I i i was like you know what i i've genuinely dropped every other game i was playing and because um, the competitive season for Rainbow Six at the time had um, finished, so I was like bored of that. I mean, Destiny 2 had just sort of come to a close, so I was bored of that. So I then grossed into Eve, and it has blown my mind. I mean, the, the, just the, the vastness of it all, and just the freedom in which you have to do whatever the hell you want is pretty exciting. And from KFU, I spent two months in there, I think, and then from that point onwards, I then applied and, and first time accepted into actual Karma Fleet. And so I went from being in high sec straight down to null sec. And so um, since, I don't know, I mean, I've been in Karma Fleet for like three and a bit months now. So I've been in null sec for three and a bit months. So I've learned more and more about the game being in null sec in three months than I did in the couple months I was in high sec and it's a lot 
I find Nullsec personally a lot more, there's, there's a lot more freedom because you don't have to worry about being concorded and you know, your space is your space and if somebody who's not blue, you shoot them kind of thing. And the attitude everybody has is very more like family than just people talking. I mean, like, if the, 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 when you join our comms, it's like everybody's very excited to have you on, you know, everybody says good morning, good evening, whatever time of day it is. They want to know how your day's been, you know, it's a real sense of, like, family almost. So it's kept me hooked to the game, and I've just been listening to the people who've been playing for years and just picking up as much information as I can, because, you know, information's never a bad thing. And um, the more I could learn, the better, and, you know, I'm still six months on, loving the game and actually I just think my absolute passion for how great it was to finally fund a game in which new players can actually achieve something relatively quickly uh, kind of inspired me is one of the main reasons why I'm, I'm running for CSM which is to sort of not let the new player experience die down and um, because the current tutorial, as good as it is, is kind of outstretched and a bit boring. And one of my main talking points on my CSM forum post is maybe bring forth some ideas to keep the current tutorial, but maybe add some extra missions about how to PvP or how to fit a ship actually prop like with proper CPU and power grid and how to make it cap stable and all that stuff you've got to learn by yourself. And and there's like a uh, philosophy that kind of goes with it. Once yeah. you learn that philosophy, at yeah. least you get an idea of like, okay, so, you know, I want to go like pure armor tank or pure t shield tank, yeah. you know, for a reason most of the time. There are situations that, you know, maybe come up that maybe I would do both, but very unlikely, you know, that, um, and, and so, and you want to have, you know, it, it, but yeah, there's a whole thing that kind of goes into the de-scanning isn't really talked about, you know, like giving no. you like a full tutorial on like go uh you know go find a plex out in zero points or in uh, low sec for you know faction warfare and scan it see if there's yeah. anybody inside if there's somebody inside yeah. be aware that it's possible that this person could be an enemy there's no yeah. way to detect whether this is an ally or an enemy on your t-scan you know like a breakdown of how to like play this game um and there i think that there is um there is some thing to be said by how much it is a community game, therefore the community should be the one really get, dipping your toes into these things. Um, but and, it, and it's something that you, you could say that is being taken away from the community um, if, they, if they give a really good tutorial. Uh, yeah. But I think that's bullshit. Um, so um, I'll, 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 I'll wait to hear somebody really give me a good argument um but if uh if if i hear a good argument maybe i'll change my mind but at this point in time what i believe is that we need to have a tutorial that really gets the player into the game shows them first of all i one thing I, i'm interested to see how, what you how you feel about this in the beginning didn't it seem like there was some kind of epic storyline that you were going to get involved in and were you disappointed that there wasn't an epic storyline or how did you feel about this like epic series of things that they kind of took you through that was like this is like there's a cool story that you're going to be jumped into with uh into the game or did you feel like it did introduce you to the concept that this was just basically a sandbox game so the two people that i'd mentioned earlier who told me about the game had basically said that it is quite literally there is little to no storyline within the game so it's not like a story driven game i mean yes there is lore and there is quests and epic arcs you can do like the sisters sisters of eve epic arc and all of that but when i first joined the game i joined knowing that it was mainly just a sandbox-esque mmo game you know like it's more just pvp make money you know industry mining whatever so i had that sort of going into the game whereas if people hadn't had that knowledge i feel like i agree with you i think some people may be put a bit put off 
because obviously you come into the tutorial when you've got this like AI talking in your head telling you you're going oh these guys are getting attacked so you let's go help the ship and all of that and then next thing you know it's like oh now you're actually in the sandbox and you've got just got to do a mining mission and a combat mission and a this exploration mission and just with the AI AIR stuff and then that's really it and once you've done that it's like out you go into the world to have fun you know like so how i mainly learned the game was thankfully joining kfu they had a lot of classes they put on specifically for certain topics within the game like descanning how to use comp how to use probes effectively how to use descan effectively how to rat how to mine xyz you know uh, uh, i i got taught by other players rather than the game and I think that having the game teach you it as a new player would be slightly better. But then again, it is a community game, so the community teaching you, I, I you can. There is see. a level of that is, is yeah. good. I think that the intricacies and the the how to do it the best way, you know, and and to yeah. really get you down on like um, how to hold down V and select, you know, an anomaly or a thing on, on overview would be like, okay, I have it at five degrees. I have it at, you know, 10 AU. That's how, you know, like specific type of scanning, but teaching you, you can lower your, your D scan, create, you know, like this is how, you know, when you run into uh, areas that are dangerous and you want to see what players are around, here's a way of, you know, having, you know, so it, it can give you kind of the basics but it, 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 at this point, I feel like it's missing a lot of like the even the basics of this game. There's, yeah. Um, but there is, I, I do have to say, what did you feel? How did you feel about the air program? Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I I didn't sort of look at it at all until I got an, an a notification in game saying I'd completed one of the four careers. <laughs> and I'd, so I, I, I one day I just logged on and it says you've completed the enforcer career path and I was like what what's that and I go into it and I'd just done all the objectives for it without knowing I'd done the objectives for it and you had all like, these prizes then <laughs> yeah and it's like I've got all this free shit and I don't know where it's come from but it's oh apparently I've done this this and this and it's just because I was ratting a lot and I was my security status went up and all this and it's just like I it's it's very I, I like the fact that the game doesn't hold your hand. But then at the same time I think that from a new player's perspective, I feel like there should be some level of hand holding to the point where you can play the game at a basic level and if you want to learn the min maxing and the intricacies, that's when you ask other people. But learning just the base mechanics, the fact that I had to learn the base mechanics of the game from other people and not the game, did shock me a little but not enough to put me off the game mm -hmm. however for some people it can be off-putting i know I, I tried to get a friend into this game and he played it for three hours and got so overwhelmed by the sheer scale of it just was just like nah this isn't for me and just gave it up and he said the tutorial was crap and it didn't teach you anything and he had no and like me trying to explain me as a new player trying to explain how the game works to somebody who has no idea how the game works i mean the people i mean i know probably five percent of the game's knowledge I, I mean i mean i mean i'm not dumb i mean i know how to play the game i know how to fly ships and how to fit ships and everything but in terms of like the intricate details of the game i'm still learning as a new player and you know um i've been told i've picked up fast compared to other new players, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's new experience of the game is going to be the same. So I think the tutorial could be improved for this one. Absolutely. Yeah, I could I could see that for sure. Um, so, you know, how did you get involved in, you know, the CSM and what, what did, how did you learn about this? And then, you know, what got you to feel, um, you know, the desire to come on and, and start uh, and start running? Basically, um, it all boils down to the fact that I have now found a game which I really care and love and there is an opportunity to join a group which in essence the entire 
sort of role of CSM is to basically be the center point between the community and CCP and give structured feedback both ways and sort of help make differences in a change and I've always been one for uh, enjoying uh, the political sort of uh, relationship aspects of multiplayer games the sort of um, how to say it, the social aspects uh, and when I found out about C CSM and really read into it and that it was actually you know very 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 political based it's quite exciting that you know you have to make your own campaign you know you have to actually have an actual reason why you're running for it you know you've got to actually put some thought and effort into it it's not just some oh uh, you know it, this game's cool I'm gonna sign up for it you know like it the fact that there's thought and effort that goes into it and then the outcome is something quite exciting that's what enticed me really and knowing that I'm a new player, I'm in a very severe disadvantage because when I've looked at the other people I'm running up against who've been playing the game for years and years and years and years, I know I'm in a basically I'm, I'm bottom of the pile. But doesn't well, that you do, you do have I mean. a unique angle and you do have a unique point of view for sure that you would you would bring to the CSM? I could definitely see that, and um, you know. Uh, one of the so moon moon wolf says um that they want to have the egg hunt event back um uh, where you used to have to like scan down eggs in uh the easter time um so i don't know if you've ever heard of this but there was uh back in the day there was an egg hunting event that you had to go around and scan descan down um pods and blow them oh, up really? for the event um and it was it was really interesting because you know, so I could see that becoming like a, just a permanent feature that's not just mm. a one-time event, that there are these like pods all throughout the galaxy that just spawn that you gotta go hunt down. And this could be, you know, teaching us to do the content that exists in this game and, and bringing us to that content, I think is important. Um, yeah. I think that there should be, you know, a hand-holding into, you know, like, hey, are you really interested in PvP? Like, here's Faction Warfare, here's a handheld, you know, go to a Plex, descan it, go inside, get some LP, go to the LP store, buy, you know, the, the um, you know, as soon as you have this amount, amount of LP, you know, 2,000 or whatever, 3,000 it is for yeah. a, a blueprint of a Comet, then, okay, go get the Comet blueprint out of the LP store, okay, now go over and find somewhere that's a station that you can build this in, and help you know have it direct you to the nearest you know yeah. manufacturing station in Losec, and then have it you know direct you to how to go and get minerals and you know like you know yeah. you can go get this yourself or you can go to the market or you can also you you, you could also jump onto a whole other character and go to Jitta, but you're in, in the Galente, so I wouldn't suggest going to Jitta. Yeah, and if, you're, <laughs> and if you're lazy, if you're lazy like me, you just go to the market and buy all the materials. <laughs> it's like I, I i i am a very uh pvp orientated player so the thought of sitting there with a laser at a rock for 20 minutes and then <laughs> oh yeah we've got compression woo let's go like you know i if i need if i need 2000 pyrite i'm just gonna go buy 2000 pyrite you know like uh, i but i do agree i think that i think there should be a uh, a little bit more hand holding uh maybe uh, not in the sense that like it just straight up just does it for you more it gives you the almost like a quest it's, right, like, it's all just like a yeah, bunch yeah, of like, like, stuff yeah. that teaches you how to do like, stuff by yeah. crafting it out like yeah. yeah like just even if it's just simple bullet points like um okay so this is your pvp intro so what you want to do is you want to go to this system then once you're in the system, go here and do this. And basically, if you need more help, then maybe, you know, you kind of just do it and do it and do it until you work out how you do it, you know? Rather than it being like, go here, do this, and this is how you do this, and this is, you know, unless it's very specific or very niche, I think that a little bit of hand a little bit of hand holding is good, but overall I think uh 
it should be if there were to be introduce a new sort of a new tutorial system i think it should be more um more freedom because it's very linear at the moment you know if you create a new character you're stuck doing that one thing i mean it doesn't even matter yeah, what race of character you pick it would not, if i pick a margalente character whatever whatever the whatever customization i make on my character the style is the same and the only difference is the system you initially spawn in and the NPC corporation you initially started in is different depending on the race. And I think that maybe if they were to update or rework the tutorial that it'd be different per race because it wouldn't be that hard to implement, surely. Yeah, and at the very least, it should, like, right off the bat be like, are you a miner? Are you a builder? Are you, you know, PvP? Yeah. Are you PvE? And have, like, a... You know, here's like a, I almost think like it should be like, you should get out and have like a training, you know, class that you kind of yeah. go into, uh, maybe even bunch new players together. Like there's the training class that starts every five minutes <laughs> and any yeah. new players that spawn during that time, you know, get to all be in the class together. And, you know, it's, it's about, you know, the first thing that kind of happens is it's like, you know, okay, we're going to teach you all the very basics. And then from there, we're going to split the class up. You know, who wants to learn about, you know, specifically about building and mining? Who wants to learn about PVE and PVP? And then, you know, divide it down from there, you know. To... I'm not, even, I'm not even that. I mean, like, in, they've already got the agent and missions thing implemented within the game. You could literally just have an agent, within the agents and mission section, have a tutorial section, which is like, go speak to this agent to learn how to do this. Or go to this system... And this system's full of loads of different agents who teach you about all the different AIR programs, but actually in depth. And even though it's not a new tutorial, it's just adding, it's just it's just adding onto something that's already within the game. So it wouldn't be a hard thing to implement because we've already got mission agents. We've already got like the career program. Just a little tweak to it by mm -hmm. going, okay, well in this system. In this system, we have the PvP guy. In this system, we have the mining guy. In this system, we have the industry guy. You know, like, if the, even just simple implementations like that, I feel like would be really beneficial to new players because it is a very, very, very daunting game when Absolutely. you first start off. It is, it is crazy because what are all these buttons on the left side of my screen? I mean, what's this overview settings? I mean, what's all these chats going on? I mean, like, you know, <laughs> there's... There, what how do i access this what how do i do the market how do i actually work out the market in my favor how am i meant to implement and sell things i mean i didn't even know i had to have someone tell me how to sell an item on the market i had an <laughs> item i had an i knew how to buy stuff but to sell stuff i i didn't even know that an item you could, could do be the sold quick buy and sell I, I, it yeah, for one yeah. one one hundredth the price yeah. that it's worth I, or... yeah but i didn't i didn't even know that you could actually um you could actually you couldn't sell something if it was in a station container hmm. and i had kept all myself in station containers because like, so you couldn't unique. sell it all <laughs> and so i was like why can't i sell it i'm in i'm in a station with a market and then they were like you know you have to drag it into your item hanger and i was like oh okay so mm -hmm. that is that's that's the kind of little yep. things i feel like should be taught just a little a little five minute mission on how the market works yeah to... no exactly i completely agree with you and uh sag and uh como thank you so much for uh the follows and uh como we had on um last night and he's running as well so uh welcome welcome uh and uh so yeah this is uh it's interesting to hear you know it sounds like uh i i, I agree very strongly with a lot of the platform that you're kind of putting out there uh can you expand on your platform what is uh what would you say would be the the highlights of your platform and then we can kind of dig into each one a little bit more after that i mean my my i basically on my csm4 and post i sort of said there were four main things i was going to focus on if i were to be elected as a candidate and one of them would be to basically first of all nullsec um the pvp element at the moment is very 
oh no, we've got a guy in a covert op ship and he's gonna now drop on the guy mining and now there's 30 redeemers. I would um, also argue that a lot of the stuff, when you're chasing a guy down in Nullsec, they just run to the ESS and how the ESS mechanics work is annoying because he'll be in a ship that's able to go 4,000 meters a second and you're in a ship that's meant for brawling and all of a sudden the guy's 200 kilometers away from you because you've had to warp in that zero and you can't warp in at any other distance than zero. So my main first point was keep the PvP element of Nullsec engaging by improving the PvP combat opportunities of a Nullsec by raising the idea of different uh, PvP activities that don't just revolve around the ESS. Because at the moment, I'd say 80% of the PvP content that I'm seeing at the moment is revolving around the ESS. And that was fun for the first three days of being in Nullsec. But now it's like, oh, we've got a guy in system. Where is he? Oh, he's at the ESS. Like, it's a negative. But it should be a positive because, you know, it's fun engaging PvP, but because he's at a certain place it's annoying <laughs> and so i would if if uh if elected i would maybe put forth the idea that we just have the outside of the ESS, not the inside the outside of the ESS, as a place like any other structure that you can warp at 0 10 20 30 whatever distance you want to like any other structure and that would just allow for the removal of the warp to your seconds and burn off to escape the guys chasing you. Because that's all that seems to happen at the moment. At least in Delve. Okay, interesting, yep. Um, but also, um, looking across high, low, and null sec, I would say as a new player, I'd want there to be more PvE activities that aren't um just mission agents but ones that may be a, a bit like faction warfare that maybe are sort of oriented around team base uh objectives and reward the player with something that's actually worth going after and working together and having cooperation um and that could be new sites or escalations because you know they're adding escalations and out for sites with the new updates so maybe if that's um something they could implement it you know because at the end of the day all the ratting i'm seeing at the moment in terms of pv8 activities is ishtar spinning or stormbringer ratting or be and very little else and so if they were to implement I, I, the idea of there being a cooperative pv experience with uh, rewards that actually entice you to do the activity other than just the bo isk from bounties, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, this is one that I um, understand. I, I see uh, Moonwolf mentions home fronts because there is so, it sounds like low sec and high sec is the one that seems to be doing this much better than 0.0. .0. Um, mm. Because home fronts, you know, have. Um, home for, and the one thing that we have the complaint about is because it's a group activity that that can be done easily, then it can be multi-boxed uh, easily by five people, type or yeah. five characters instead of five yeah. people. Um, it, it, my stance on that is much more along the lines of like we still need to have activities for five and ten and fifteen and thirty people and stuff like that, even though somebody could just make thirty alts and then run the content themselves with 30 people. Um, and there is some of that that definitely happens, but um, I find that oh, I know. it's a yeah. lot easier to fight those people because it's, um, to a certain point, it's really easy to do PvE that way. PvP, when you know what they have and you can counter it, and then you just come in with the counter fleet and drop on yeah. them and, and pull them apart, there's a lot of yeah. opportunities that can happen there. But in any case, um, I... I I do see that there is a very big lack of that, and has always been kind of a weird lack of that in, in NullSec. Um, and I think that there's opportunities to, to expand all of that out for sure um, to be a lot more. And yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you that that's... Um, the, the key is is to get people in groups doing things together that put them in dangerous situations 
that where you can be ready for PvP. You know, if you yeah. can get like 10, 15 people together and go out and do some PvE activity that isn't strenuous on your, um, that you, it's not, that's the reason why I like faction warfare is because it's not strenuous to do faction warfare. You can, uh, the rats um, usually don't matter on anything. Battlefields is a little bit more strenuous and a little bit more that you have to kind of deal with, but it's a 30 person site. So yeah. dedicating 10 people to, you know, 15 people to like doing the strenuous stuff and then having 15 people ready for PVP and the ability yeah. to pull in possibly 15 more yeah. is a kind of cool kind of concept. But the basic five person fight site is that rat doesn't matter at all. The only thing I would like the mat the rat to do is is point, if you ask me, yeah. because then and it does that in in pirate faction warfare. Um, but you, if you're out there, you know, with a five ten man group, and you're doing flexing, um, it's so it's it basically we're just waiting for PvP. You know, we're making yeah. a little bit of money on the side, and it's you know pretty decent money, um, comparatively to just like you said, just running around in Ishtars and ratting. Yeah. Um, you know, with, you know, or, you know, skyhooks or, you know, smart bombers or however you, you just like do this repetitive task that's over and yeah. over again. Um, Which seems more like a chore. Yeah. At and... the end of the day, it's like, if I want money, I know that, that for me personally, I have no, I have fully skilled into PvP and ratting. So I could wait a couple of months to get into mining but if i want money now i know that i've either got to go out and do some pvp and I hope i get some good loot drops i can sell or i go and spin around some havens wait like, mm -hmm. in an ishtar and hey i mean isk is isk but at the end of the day um most of the escalations you get from uh the 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 big the the haven the havens are great right because they g give some of the best uh isk ticks um for bounties but the escalations they give are just awful because they're rated the dead rated 10 out of 10 whatever it is because it's no sec mm -hmm. i mean i can you can solo in an ishtar in 20 minutes it's all battleships with the rare chance of a dreadnought spawning at the end but that's really rare i've seen it happen like twice um but then you get an escalation and if it's not a blood occupied mine you have to bring billions of isk worth of ships to go do the escalation for a couple hundred million so it's like what's the point of doing the escalation if i'm gonna get 170 million in bounties and maybe some loot which doesn't even add up to the multi-billion ship i have to bring to do the escalation so I, uh, I I was very excited with the Equinox update coming out because it was all about Nullsec Rejuvenation, Skyhooks, all that. Well, but I thought there would be some great new PvP content. And from my mining friends, I've heard they screwed up Asteroids and then they then had to rework how they fixed Asteroid spawning. Uh, combat normally spawn rates got decreased, but then uh, uh, in terms of how quick they spawn, they got slowed down and then they actually changed with that by 70% so they spawn 70% quicker and it's just like it was just meant to be this reju rejuvenation thing that kind of went a bit sideways and so I would just like to see there be a rejuvenation project that actually fulfills what it's meant to do if that makes sense absolutely uh, what's your stance on uh, the um, skyhooks so skyhooks to me are an interesting addition to the game purely because i mean i am excluding uh pi and all that i don't do any of that it's, to me as somebody who's a pvp player uh skyhooks add another aspect to the system that is another vulnerability you have to look out for but it's also another opportunity for you to exploit so I do a lot of pirate fleets where we go into Frat or Pandemic Horde or wherever space, right? Any any Norfolk space that isn't ours. We go to we used to go to the ESS and then just rob their ESS money and go go home. But now they've got uh, skyhooks, so we can change our fleet composition, and we have a deluge or a blockade runner just sitting cloaked or just away from the skyhook. And we steal all their minerals and all their resources, which is an 
Esquire a lot more money, and it just adds another opportunity for there to be uh, a, a robbing factor, you know. And I like I like it personally. I know that I know if there has been critique. I know people have been critiquing it, and I know that it could be improved from a industry perspective. But I I I don't know that perspective but from a PvP and in terms of like a new thing to play with. It's quite cool. What do you opinion. think of the uh, new changes to it? Uh, which new changes are that? Oh, that it's only once every three days uh, for one hour that it's vulnerable now. Oh yeah, that. Um... Yeah. Uh. That made that made it. It went from <laughs> like I just said, it was fun robbing them, and now it's like okay, now we got a plan because we you know when you filament you don't particularly know where you're going to end up and you may go yep. through a system that has a vulnerable skyhook and you may go through 20 systems without funding a vulnerable skyhook and it's like but at least at the end of the day you still have an ESS in every system that's so if the skyhook's not available you go to the ESS if it has money that's worth taking interesting okay so you're, you're dealing with it you know yeah. it, it's 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 an annoying thing but there are workarounds to it in the sense that uh, you just go back to ESS Robin. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so we were on uh, number three of uh, of your your four pillars. Um, so what's number three? I mean, uh, we kind of covered that earlier. Um, that number three was give new and returning players a quick but effective rundown on the game mechanics and information about and it's basically tutorial stuff like a, a, a rework of the tutorial right. like we've yeah. so we, we, we got it in, so that's a, that's a strong foundation and and uh, it makes sense that's yeah. why we spent a lot of time talking about yeah this. <laughs> and then the fourth one was uh the idea of the an ess rework which i briefly touched on i mean my idea of a perfect dss uh would be um one the outside you can warp to at any distance that's cool uh i don't i i like the fact that you can only bring cruises and above and above into it i i have got no issue with that and um, and in terms of when you're inside the ess uh i think that you, you should be able to have micro warp drive as well not just afterburners because having to reship put on an afterburner because you know they've gone inside the ess or have a specific ship prepped just in case someone goes into an ESS is a bit of a pain in the arse rather than having the fit that you've perfectly spent a while making and all of a sudden you can't use that ship because it's got a uh, micro wheel drive instead of an afterburner and it's like you know a bit annoying <laughs> yeah and if it's to prevent people from being really fast it's like well they just over prop their yeah. afterburner and yeah. now they're you know kind of just as fast so um, and I mean, it, like I you said, it's it. a huge, you know, uh, it's a huge bonus to the robber. You know, the robber then ha is going to be specifically set up so that he can exist in the ESS environment without any hindrance to his fit. Whereas the, the people that are defending have to go and figure out, uh, you know, reship, go find a new thing. Which is something that I like about the Skyhooks, which was interesting, is because... You could just send any good old ratter in if it was just one person's, you know, robbing yeah. with one, you know, yeah. an E and I or something like that. You can warp in your, you know, rattlesnake at a hundred and, you know, start yeah. pelting away at me, and I, I'm also scrammed, you know, and can't go above a thousand kilometers or whatever the the speed limit was. Um, yeah, and you're and also at times your warp disrupted, and I I like skyhooks, and I like I like their their mechanics. It's just the ESS is so favored towards the robber if the essentially me and my corp mates basically have a saying which is if they're already inside you may as well just ignore it because at that point if it's an actual fleet with an actual composition designed for ESS robbing unless you have a perfectly built together anti-ESS robbing fleet you're not going to be able to stop them because 
at the end of the day they'll have their ear noise kiting you they'll have no, they'll have gnosises with uh uh skirmish command boosts and all that you know they'll have the one guy sitting on the middle and on the actual podium robbing and the rest of the fleet going around them providing protection and they'll it's 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 a it's a world it's a world situation the whole ESS thing and I think that's that's the one thing that annoys me about Nolsec is the ESS. I I like the payment system. I like the fact that part of your rating bonus goes towards the payment system, and at the end of the two hour period, you know you get this nice big chunk of money. But the whole mechanics behind it, I think, needs a little tweak. Yeah, no, I I, I can definitely see where you're coming from on that that's something that i um it's interesting because i have i liked the idea of ess's when i heard about them i thought bank robbing was super cool but i, I did only just a little bit of, of messing around with that um i got super excited with uh these sky hooks and now i'm mm. devastated man like this is yeah this is this is gonna make it so that i can't go sky hook rating anymore for for the most part like um, I like you said it's it's you know maybe I can get my fix going to ESS now but it's just not the same. <laughs> I mean I, I I definitely recommend that if you're gonna go ESS robbing you have a you have a couple of people with you and you and you have a dedicated sort of composition because oh yeah depending on on, on depending no, depending on where you go your your response is either gonna be a bunch of people coming in in unprepared ships or a bunch of people coming in in very prepared ships oh like... yeah absolutely and well that's the thing though is that is this the, the finding of even something that will be you know rateable for anything that'll be worth anything is uh so un unlikely with skyhooks currently yeah that ESSs look like where you can actually get like a small gang fight out of um, I liked. I liked, gonna... the, I liked. Sorry to cut you off. I liked how they had skyhooks, and it just frustrates me that um, with the change because they finally implemented a PvP uh, activity which had a uh, a a a monetary gain for the robber, but also had a legitimate reason for you to defend because without. The sky if they steal all your materials you can't fund your ansiblets gates you can't fund you know you need the, the stuff to build for your soft buildings so you had a reason to defend it i mean ess is not really any reason if you want to protect the 50 to 200 million esque in the ess go ahead but the sky hook is your raw pi materials out there taking yeah, i've, I've of gotten them. billions of isk off of one sky hook before. yeah yeah exactly so it actually had a good reason and then they had to go and change it you know we were having too much fun so ccp were like no fun for you it was, was unfortunate unfortunate yeah um so before we wrap things on up here um do you have anything that uh we haven't talked about yet that uh you're really passionate about and you you want to make sure you get into the interview before we wrap things up here just that if any new players are actually going to be watching this or listening to this just although it may be a bloody grind at the start just keep going because honestly once you get into a community that maybe is a big no sec block or a low sec block or whatever if you get into a community of players that are passionate about the game you will have one hell of a time of eve genuinely i like six months in and i'm still have the same level of passion for the game as I did when I first I play. So just, you know, stick with it because it does get better and it does get a lot more fun. <laughs> it is it's, uh, the rough road in the beginning. Excuse me. The rough road in the beginning, but yes, definitely yeah. stick with it. Um, so also I wanted to make sure that you have an opportunity to give any shout outs to anybody, um, you know, your mom, your dad, your mentor, you know, your the guys who got you into this karma fleet, you know, any what what organizations, people, any shout outs that you want to give out to uh, to anything. I'll just say all the guys at Karma Fleet, man. Just honestly, just the onboarding they gave the just the the fact that I can jump on at any time of the day and have a great time playing Eve, chatting to a bunch of great guys and girls, and you know, just if you have a question, somebody in the comms will answer. You know, so just shout out to all the conflict guys. Mad awesome. respect to them, honestly. 
some of the kindest people I've ever met online, so, you know, big up. Mad respect. Awesome. And is there any projects that you're working on, anything that you're doing? Um, you know, obviously the CSM campaign that we've just been talking about this whole time, but do you have a YouTube, a Twitch, or, you know, um, any kind of in-game activities that you, you're planning on doing um, while you're campaigning here? Uh, I don't know. I might start streaming. I might start streaming. If, if... If this CSM campaign doesn't go so well, I might start streaming just to get my name out there next year. I would uh, say start immediately, man. Just, just yeah. do it right now, and uh, <laughs> you know this is this is the way to jump into it. Uh, Twitch's community is very, very um, friendly here for Eve Online. Uh, we love seeing new people, and you've, you've got a good reason, uh, you know, po politically to get your name out there right now. I would yeah. highly suggest it. And it's, it's pretty laid back and pretty fun. Um, there's lots of different activities that you can stream. Um, obviously, you know, there's OPSEC and stuff like that that you'll, you'll have to work with to a certain degree. Um, I go with a very low OPSEC give a fuck, um, but I'm not yeah. goon. Um, so yeah. I'm able to... Uh, the Galente are more just like, get the news out there, man! Let's get, let's get yeah. our face out there and show them. <laughs> What we're made out of, so. I've uh, I've uh, I've seen some of our uh, goon streamers, and half their screen is blurred, and it's like, you know, so. <laughs> and <laughs> and there's no, you can't hear anybody else's voice, and it's like so it's just the streamer's voice, which is fine if the streamer is like very charismatic, but uh, the half the screen's blurred, the other half screen's blurred. All you see is their ship, and then the person they're shooting out, and their voice, so. <laughs> A no sex stream. No sex streaming in a big block is a bit different. <laughs> but you can also just jump over and do some, you know, low sec activity. You know, some yeah. solo PV. I would highly yeah. suggest this come to Faction Warfare. Come to Hey D Leaves. Hey Die Less. Um, and uh, you know, just jump in a frigate and you know, uh, faction frigate of your choice. Um, not not pirate, just a regular faction, and you can find lots of solo fights in um, the Hey Die Less area. Um, and be really great for streaming where you don't have to worry about being opsec because you're looking for um, stream snipers, actually. Yeah. Actually, your stream yeah. snipers become some of your best friends because a lot of the times they're just going to bring one frigate to come fight you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's limited by this, you know, the you just go into a scout. Um, and then you get to fight both sides, so it doesn't matter if it, or you could enlist and then make your time worth it a little bit i would highly highly suggest enlisting you know there's always a good old uh you know galente introduction to to faction warfare i could always you know provide to you if you ever wish and you can always oh, jump in good. and out you know you don't have to stay in faction good. warfare so just come in for a day i'll show you i'll show you how we catch sharks it's fun yeah, it's show dangerous me the ropes. <laughs> show me the ropes oh, i'm down i'm down i'm down show me the ropes definitely Awesome. But yeah, so in, um, if you do that, definitely uh, let me know and um, I'd be happy to rage you whenever I can and, and, and support you too because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a new player experience um, in the CSM is really awesome and, and uh, seeing you, if you would jump on and start doing new, be a new streamer and new to EVE, I, I, will, I will help you 100% and I know a lot of the community will here as well. I just want to say thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it, genuinely. Um, just being able to get the name out there. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for the interview. It's been a lot of fun. And yeah, let's hit Fashion Warfare sometime. Awesome, awesome. Um, and uh, Shepard, uh, stream sniping is not against TOS. Uh, it, Eve is one of the most uh, ridiculous spy game that has ever been created if, if you should read all about the heists and the the spying the the destruction of alliances bob got destroyed goons got destroyed for a very short time um by a spy coming in and just wiping out the entire alliance um there's tons of uh craziness that kind of goes on here and uh um Streaming is is definitely puts yourself open to being stream sniped 100% if it's truthfully an opsec thing There's reasons why 90% of the screen is blurred out. Um, yeah 
I mean, if I were to come up and do faction warfare with you, my screen wouldn't be blurred because obviously I'd be in comms with you and, you know, obsex, whatever. But if I was to be streaming in Delp, it, it, I would have to mute my comms and make sure that none of my pings appeared on screen and all of that. Yep. <laughs> Not hard to get the pings off the screen and stuff. You just, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. You can easily... I, and if you have any questions about how to get, you know, OBS or, you know, um, get started on a lot of this stuff, it's not that hard actually once once you get the setup going yeah um and and to start you don't really need much you, you can build it as you go for sure um and then uh moon wolf also kind of points out that yeah and i agree 100 percent is that it's really awesome to see it from an actual new player perspective because i've done the new player experience but i'm an old fart i see this from a very <laughs> different perspective um, I am learning, you know, and I'm missing on a lot of the, like, understanding of actually what you're missing in the beginning because, um, you know, I already know it. It's like, well, I know what D-Scan is, so I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I can miss that that's not something, or I can also miss that it is something that's part of the, the tutorial, and I didn't know it, and I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. they actually did cover that, and I would like to be whenever, I, you know, if they do improve it, um, you know, and there is a lot of improvements that have happened over the years. Um, it's really awesome to to get that kind of perspective, though, from yeah. somebody that's brand new to the game. And I think you bring a much, you know, that is a really good perspective to bring to this. So even if you don't get into CSM, I highly encourage you to continue broadcasting your voice out there any way that you can. Um, this has been a really, really great interview. It's been fun kind of hanging out here with you and learning um you know your tale about what you how you saw it and how you were brought into eve and really encourages me because i after all these years i'm not a bitter vet yet i don't know how i fucking love this game <laughs> i like i listened on long car rides my wife gets pissed when i'm driving because i'm like playing eve <laughs> online uh this history and i highly suggest if, if you haven't um reading material for you just cool things to to learn about the history of eve is like empires of eve and empires of eve 2 it's um you can get them on audiobook and i highly suggest getting the the you know uh leather bound you know like really cool uh yeah. awesome um books that they have very beautiful pictures and really cool like it really shows you the war zone in the book itself um, even get yeah. it on Kindle and stuff like that, but it takes you through the beginning of Eve all the way. Uh, book two brings you up to I think like 2015, and tells yeah, you the I, whole I saw... 0, 0.0 story. Yeah, I I, I saw one of the uh, Empires of Eve, but it's updated to like a couple of months ago. Uh, it wasn't under the same person, but it was like a time lapse of like the map and the different alliances and stuff, and it's like how you know goons started declan and then made their way down and everything but i have one question for you just before we end this up off are you a gurgoons person that's the question oh am i a gurgoons no i i'm very gur nobody um <laughs> and and i've been i was a long time like i've partied with uh upper leadership you know like i've gone to tabletop games you know and played uh you know different kind of strategy games like in real life with people um in goons i've had a lot of great parties with goons i never really got involved in leadership um uh, myself there were some things that i had been you know kind of working on to a certain degree um but really i like just being kind of a foot soldier and yeah. going to the parties and partying hard because the the city that i live in is you know notorious for being a goon haven and had like you know all the party there was a two two parties a year that were like the big huge parties for yeah. games that were here there was um huge ass uh you know they're not huge but a lot of other parties that happened throughout the year here as well um and just like there's a huge eve player base in my area so it was really yeah. cool um to to hang out and be with goons but i've always wanted to kind of build something on my own and build it from like kind of the ground up and and mess around with uh faction warfare where i don't want to have a massive amount of support 
um, unless I'm going to do something really crazy, you know, and, you know, really, it, there was, there were some ideas of, of, of causing a lot of chaos and faction warfare, yeah. um, and being supported by goons to do that. But in the end, I decided that, you know, it was best for, you know, I would just was like, I just want to do my own corporation, run a podcast, have some fun. Yeah. Um, so I amicably left goons, uh, very strongly amicably. Like I, I could come back to goons whenever I want, really. And yeah. And I, if I ever did go out to 0, 0.0, that's probably where I would go because I just, I still know some people that are there. Um, and, you know, a lot has changed since I left Goons. Um, and so I, at this point in time, I don't have a, a really strong affiliation with them at all. Um, but I know a couple people that are in there and I like Goons. Um, but I also like Frat. Um, I like especially attacking and fighting Frat. <laughs> you know like, me too um, i like attacking you know and and i like going into goon space and having fights with goons um you know the both are very heavy-handed sometimes with their their white bo but that's fine that's their space i under i i am not one of those whiners it's like why did you blob me it's like because they had more number like that's just the game my, my friend like very rare do you go oh, oh, oh we have too many people stop yeah. <laughs> getting in fleet you know, one minute, like <laughs> one, 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 one minute you're just chilling. Next minute there's thirty redeemers, and it's like, well, welcome to Nolsec. Yeah, and and that'll happen. But then sometimes you get some really good fights, and you know you have a lot of fun. You go around and, and harass the ratters. You know, is is a lot of fun. Um, and you know, I I enjoy the the political you know system that exists and hearing the stories of all that. I think things have gotten really stagnant. And there needs to be some bloodied noses out there and there needs to be some war and some destruction and mayhem and uh more factions to you know come up and and rise up during these wars there there's you know a prosperity that needs to be brought to the laymen and the the lower class citizens as i call us here in losec as well as just all lower class citizens throughout the empires throughout the 0, 0.0 and throughout losec there's plenty of us that are just you know, we're not part of that group that just has an unlimited amount of AIS. And unfortunately in EVE, there is there is a group of people who have near an unlimited amount of AIS. And to make it say that, you know, everybody else is better off being extremely poor is ridiculous. Mm. You know, we should mm. have, we should be able to throw some ships around and have some fun. I agree that things need to be expensive yeah. to a certain, or need to be, they need to hurt when a you trout. lose stuff to a certain degree, depending on what you're throwing around. But you can't, I mean, scarcity was the worst idea Yeah, scarcity, ever. scarcity. I mean, even as somebody who's been playing for six months, I know about scarcity. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you now, I, I, bought, I bought my second Marshall last night, and it cost me 17 billion to fully fit it. And I was like, 17 billion for a blops? But, you know, it's, it's a fun ship, so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but it is good to hear that, you know, at least as an, a new player that you, you've you got the funds. Because, I mean, like, a year into the game, I would have been happy be getting at a billion -isk, you know. But, and, and, and it needs to be that way, because I could buy a lot more with a billion -isk when I was brand new as well. So. Oh, I bet, I bet. I mean, a billion -isk now can barely fit you a battle cruiser, let alone, like... You know, get in and and you know it, right. the, the the pricing the pricing needs to change, in my opinion. But that's a topic for another time. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on, though. And um, yeah. this is this was really awesome. And hopefully, we we see more of you, um, whether it's by streaming or if you ever want to come on and and talk more. Um, you know, your experience 100%. and what happens later on, and uh, or or come on and help uh, me blow people up. You know whatever the case or all of the I'm above down. you know I'm let's, down. All of the or above. when, when but when you make csm though i want you to come on and talk about your you know how what it's like being a newbie in csm for sure yeah yeah how i get bullied and harassed no um, no no I'll, <laughs> they shut me definitely... in lockers <laughs> <laughs> no but i'll definitely i'm i'm always happy to come back on and if you want to go around shooting some people that sounds good to me so just give me a shout man absolutely Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you all for watching as well. Thank you all for who are listening in, and have a great night. Um, we will be back. We're going to have some more interviews, uh, or another interview that we're going to have 
um, in about an hour or so. Um, and I'm going to come back and do a little bit of solo PvP. And uh, we're just going to go see what kind of fun we can have while we're uh, getting ready for the next interview. Have a great, uh, hopefully just a short amount of time for some of you. Uh, but everybody else listening on the podcast and the YouTubes, uh, thank you very much for listening. Have a great night. Cheers, Dustin.